Words cannot convey how much I love that record. It's as old as the hills, but every once in a while I play it. See the joy in my face, the ecstasy when I mm -hmm. listen to that? Mm -hmm. What is it about that record that makes me feel really good? What is it about it? There's something wonderful about it, isn't there? I don't know, it's an old one. Maybe people say, I'll go born, I'll fart, play on the old stuff. But I don't think so. Because do you know why, Sean? Because this is Bank Holiday Monday and anything goes. Good morning, everyone. I don't think so. I don't think that's the attitude. That's my attitude. It uh, shouldn't be the attitude. I know it shouldn't be my attitude, but that is my attitude because I'm a rebel. I don't mean that in any political sense. I am a man who is going against the grain. As a matter of fact, do you know what I noticed this morning? I was very depressed this morning. I put on the radio. Do you know what I do? I flick around the station sometimes to see what's happening, especially in Bank Holiday Monday. Do you know what I discovered? What? Do you know who's sitting in for Chris Evans this morning? Mm, no, uh, uh, that's all changed around. Do you know who's sitting in no. for Chris? What do you mean it's all changed? What's all changed around? Uh, there was a trail on the TV where all d different presenters are presenting the regular shows. You understand? There's somebody sitting in for Chris Evans' show and then somebody sitting in, Terry Wogan sitting in for That's somebody. That's a different thing entirely. I'm talking about today, the bank holiday for That's one day only. Different thing entirely. Different thing entirely. Different thing who's entirely. sitting in for Chris Evans today? Right. Guess who's sitting in for Chris Evans okay, today? Okay, let us guess. The two I people in this world that I can't stand Ach. are sitting in for each other. It's like Burke sitting in for hair. Ryan Tuberty. Oh, Ryan Tuberty. Ryan Tuberty. Uh, uh, now, do you think I'm jealous? That. Yeah. I'm not. It's not that at all. How dare you even say that? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I just suggested you say it. That's why. How dare you say that if, yes. I, if I suggest it? And uh, watching TV at the weekend, we were watching television, we must talk about the things that happened over the weekend. Of course, we had a big weekend here in Derry Stoke, London, Derry, the uh, City of Derry Jazz Festival, of which I heard not a single note. Same here. Because I wasn't here. No, but I was. I heard uh, Grania Duffy, who played uh, guitar and sang uh, on the programme on Friday, live in the programme in Belfast on Friday mm -hmm. morning. She appeared in a, one of our local venues last night. She was fantastic. And I happened to be there in the Magnet Bars, my local, as you well know. And lots. Uh, I hear great reports about a band called Troika. And now there's a lovely band up in the Derry City Football Club, wasn't there? They were I really don't good. I know, I wasn't there. I know, but yes. <laughs> yes <sorry. laughs> people complained that they couldn't dance to them, which is an odd thing in a jazz festival, isn't it? See, people perhaps don't realise what a jazz festival is. It's about jazz, right? They don't like bands they can't dance to. What's wrong with that? There's just something fundamentally wrong with that. I'm not saying about everybody, but I do hear complaints that you couldn't dance to them. What is this all about? Why are you so silent? I'm listening to you. Ah, uh, you're I'm not just, listening to I'm me. I'm listening to you. And I, actually, I, I think, think you're probably, I think why you're so silent is you've probably been overwhelmed by your visit to Dunlow over the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure that you were invited to open the Daniel O'Donnell Visitor Centre. Uh, were you was, there? No. I, I, was, I was very, very annoyed. Very, very I would have annoying. thought you would have been the first to get an invitation because, after all, I mean, if it wasn't for you, Daniel wouldn't be where he is today. And he, and, and he quite likes me. He likes you. He doesn't like yeah. me because no. he knows he senses something evil about me. Would you mention that to him? Well, tell him I was, I okay, was I'll, 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 I'll tell him now. Yeah. Listen, Sean was very upset that you didn't seem to invite him to the opening of the Daniel O'Donnell Visitor Centre in Dunlow over the weekend. Well, as far as I know, Jerry, he got an invitation. There was invitation sent out to oh, hundreds of people. And, you know, as far as I know... Well, he Sean, says he, he didn't get one. Well, he and, you know, he, he regards it as a snub. Well, he shouldn't, you know, because in a way I feel very close to him, you know. and Be careful. Well, you know what I mean. I... He doesn't need an invite. He does need an invitation because he's a very shy lad and he doesn't leave the city easily. And well, he, has to, he only leaves the city if he knows he's wanted somewhere else. That's why he never goes anywhere else. Well, and it, and he, he would have thought, Dunlow's very quick, very, Dunlow's very handy to him. Well, I know that. He could have got a lift with a priest. His people are from Dunlow. They're down around there. I know, his it's, people are. He's, yes, he's a, he's a Donegal lad himself, as indeed you do not believe that I am too. That's right. I'm a son of Donegal, although you don't like that. Well, if you see him, tell him he's more than welcome to come to the centre. And so are you, Jerry. I would love to see you, Jerry. I would like to put you beside me, bust. <laughs> I believe it's five euros in. I don't know. They never yes, charged. They never charged me a penny. So I, I was quite lucky in that respect. I it seems it. a reasonable enough tariff. I think so too. I and think. I all, mean, for God's sake. There's all sorts of things to see. God knows. There's a bust it. of him there. Yes. Yes, and I would like to see you beside it. It'd be lovely. Why don't you come down, Jerry, and bring your wee microphone with you? Maybe do a program or something and talk to me. I don't want to get too near your bust. Sure, I, 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 I would love to see you, Jerry. Come right, down. Okay, but Sean's it. very upset. I think you should drop him a note. Some explanatory 
sentence or two do you explain perhaps blame the post office everybody else does that I'll have a word with him if you, if you have a telephone number I'd appreciate it we'll phone him later and she will do something for you and him like what? we'll come down to the centre I don't come want to go and, and do an outside broadcast I don't want to do that Hugo does all those well I'm I, I, Hugo, I, I send I Hugo down hello 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 how are you doing how are you doing Daniel 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 <laughs> <laughs> Who's the wee man beside you? Who's the wee man beside you? My husband, my husband, what age is he? 90, 90. You may as well keep him now. You may as well keep him now. Good luck, good luck. God bless. Do you know what I was just thinking there? Know what I was thinking? What? We haven't got a laugh for Daniel. How would Daniel laugh? We've heard him laughing. He laughs like, uh, do you remember? Well, this is going back He's a while. Laugh I, no, I noticed this. I'm, I'm glad you brought this yes. up. See, so it's I, part of my training. I noticed this. Now, yeah. he's got a laugh. I noticed it before you. Hold on, you didn't know what I'm going to say, though. You may disagree with me when no, I'm but about I noticed to say. I haven't got a laugh. No, he has a laugh, a bit of a laugh. I, 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 I'll do it. His laugh is like somebody else. Now, perhaps, bear with me here. Uh, m- many people may not remember an actor called Burt Lancaster. Yes. Well, many people may not know that because, you know, he died in 1990-something, 20 years ago. But he was very, very good. I liked him. And his people were from Belfast, as we talked about this in the programme before. And he had a peculiar clipped accent, which I can't really do. Mm. And a lot of people listening to that uh, wondered why he had that accent. And I know why, because when he was a child, he was surrounded by people from Belfast, his granny and all the people. So he's got a, almost a Belfast accent. But that's another story. But he had a peculiar laugh. And this is the way Bert Lancaster used to laugh. <laughs> you can do it better, can't you? No. I... <laughs> just like that. Daniel's got that. He just goes, <laughs> that's all he does. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not too I long. Da- I think Dino would laugh like that. <laughs> 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 oh, you're a terrible man. <laughs> what, is that, is no, that... we're only guessing. We're speculating no, I know. here. Aye. How would Dino laugh? <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. That's, that's not, that's not, it's I not think, a laugh I at think, all. I, know, I noticed I him laughing. Dino would, I think Dino would have a hearty laugh. He doesn't I'm, have a hearty laugh. He no. would clasp his hands and put them in between his oh. legs. <laughs> Uh, Between his legs. Uh, uh, you know what? Uh, uh, no, he would bend over. Anyway, here, laugh. Let's, start, uh, let's start the programme. There are people who don't know what this programme is about and they're expecting something to happen. Let's just warn them that nothing will happen. But we'll start the programme anyway. Hello, good morning. Uh, this is the Jerry Anderson Show. Sean Coyle is with me. The number... No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. The number to ring is 08459-555-678 because we do accept phone calls because, after all, your calls are important to us. Did you the, see Peter Cook? Can't you hear me doing the oh, spiel sorry. here? Yeah. The email address is jerry.anderson, spelled A-N-D-E-R-S-O-N, at bbc.co.uk. And the uh, text messaging service, for those of you who should be doing something else entirely, like having a life, is 81771. What did you say? Did you see Peter Cook? The no, old, I, the old uh, Is he Park, not dead? The old Parkinson interviews. I watched the Parkinson interview last night before I went to bed. Uh, his interview with Richard Burton. Ah, stop it. <laughs> All right. I thought they made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> ah, shh. I'm a calm him down. You don't believe me. <laughs> Did you not know what was on? I, but I thought Parkinson made a mistake. What do you mean made a mistake? What do you mean made a mistake? <laughs> I want to... Say bad words. Go on, say no, bad words. Turn your head. No, I won't. I, we, we were watching Parky on Friday. Don't call him Parky. Parkinson. All right, then. Okay, we were watching do Parkinson that. on Saturday night. Yes. And it was all Peter Cook interviews. Yes. And then when Parkinson was over, yeah. he says, uh, join me next week when my guest will be Richard Burton. Yeah. And I said, that's a mistake because Richard Burton was on last week. Because I heard the undertone talking about it. No, he was on. This is a recording that was made last week. Maybe they're repeating it again. No, you can't say repeating it again. Maybe they're repeating it. Is that the one where Parkinson wore the jumper? jumper? The open neck jumper, yeah. Well, that was on last week. Uh, and, uh, yeah. And I thought, I said, that's no, a mistake. That was on last week. And Richard so, Burton does Laurence Olivier and everything. So we'll not watch it tomorrow night because they've made a mistake. Oh, they haven't made a mistake. No, and watch it. Was it. On. It's, it's the best ever. Ah, and you know what the most wonderful thing about it? These two, they just talk to each other. I hit that. Do you know what I mean? Do the way Graham Norton showed... What time Jeff- was that at? Well, I, wa- I watched it at 11 o'clock, but it was recorded. Uh, it's, you should get one of those things. It, they cost a little money, but, you know, try it. Sky Plus. No, I sure. must suggest iPlayer. iPlayer means you have to sit down and watch it. iPlayer, of course, yeah, iPlayer, but it's probably too late now because I think I might have been on last week. It was. What, what do you mean you have to sit down and watch it? What do you want to do, watch it on a bicycle? No, but... You- <laughs> No, you know what I mean. You have to make an effort. Watch everything. No, but you have to make an effort. If you watch something on iPad, you make an effort to watch it. 
But you have to make an effort to turn on your TV. No, as you well. don't. The thing just comes on for you. <laughs> That's different. That's different viewing. It's not as sore on you. Do you know what I mean? It's not as you don't have to concentrate as much. <laughs> well, I watched it last night. If it's on the iPlayer, you know you, you have to watch it yeah. because this is your last chance. Yeah. Well, I watched it last night. It wasn't sore on me at all. <laughs> it's very sore on me. Listen, a listener asks, uh, probably apropos the weekend's television, uh, The Voice. Have you been watching The Voice? No. Nope. Trunched in the ratings, apparently, over the weekend. That's I'm very no. sad to hear. No. Uh, I was just thinking, and this person was thinking the same, if, Kim, if King Billy came back on his horse... Would it be called King Will I Am? <laughs> <laughs> no, would he? Uh, all the people are communicating with me. Uh, Colum says, uh, look, he says, civil servants are not Indians. They're not. They're not. Definitely not. He says, I bet you don't know this. We have lost our radios. Apparently, I was never told about this. Apparently, some time back, a decree came down from upon high that people weren't allowed to listen to the radio, civil servants, because people were listening to the wireless I'm one of those iPlayer, listener-type persons who have to catch up with this programme in the evening, particularly your podcast. Maybe you already know that it's been illegal for us hard-working civil servants to listen to the radio in the office. Do you realise they've not only banned it, it's illegal. But how can it be illegal? Well, that's what he says here. Uh, please do not try to imagine the horror of silence, which at the switch of a switch, sorry, launched all 23.7 million of us into the reality of actually being overheard by our bosses as we endlessly bitched and grumbled about them. Bored yet? No, I'm not bored yet. If not then, here's my simple request. At some point, say hello to your online listeners. You might be surprised how many are local addicts, never mind your ever-growing international fans. Now, I have to say... And I don't like blowing my own trumpet, even though I did try Nolan's jacket on the other night. I don't mind saying that I notice a huge increase in people who are listening to this program from abroad because they communicate with you. Have you noticed that? No. P.S. I've got a couple of hundred boom boxes for sale at great prices, as well as a collection of authentic transistor radios. There Would we that go. have anything to do with music? Not been able to illegally, you know, they're not illegally not allowed. Could be. What about the music? Could be. Could, I, I really don't know. I, I personally think it's a draconian measure to make sure that people are working. Terrible. I think it's terrible, of course it is. Anyway. I mean, do you remember the time when the BBC had a programme on called? Called? <laughs> come on. <laughs> the news? No. What? Come on. What do you mean? What are you, you listen about? to? Did you listen to as a wee boy? Housewife's Choice? No. Uh... The uh, other children's one. family favourites? No, the other one. Uh, uh, Journey into Space? No, the other one. What other one? The one that you listened to. News round? No. What? And you heard the... Hancock's ger- Half Hour? No. and you, you hear- I'm surprised you can't get the name of that. And you heard the girls in the factory singing? Oh, Music While You Work. Music While You Work. Du, BBC du, had a programme called du, Music While You Work. I can remember the thing. So who stopped that? BBC stopped it because they could see it. Catholics were enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> that's Christy Moore, of course. That's from his last album, which was called Folk Tale. And that's a track called uh, Little Honda 50, which is recorded by another man. And another man said to me, he said, why do you play that Christy Moore version when you can play the other man's version? But the other man's version is crap. There is a difference, you see. Now, this is the type of thing I'm talking about. Here's a young lady, says, uh, my friend Sarah, who's originally from... You're very th- loud. Pardon? Very loud. Well, I don't think so, because I've got a complaint to the contrary, saying that the music is far too loud, and whenever you and I speak, you can't hear us, which is you, something you that's have, been happening you, over a period of time. No, you have a new microphone. I know, it's great, isn't it? <laughs> I'm empowered. <laughs> this is a lady called Sarah that's who's... how loud that is. I know, it's great, isn't it? Who's originally from Sweden. You're distorting. I'm not distorting. Ask Ken. Ken? Am I distorting? No. <laughs> There's a call for you in one. Ken's my imaginary friend. <laughs> my friend Sarah, who is originally from Sweden, really loves your program. She used to live and work in Northern Ireland and was a regular listener. Unfortunately, she's moved back to Sweden. Uh, Sarah Falkstad, and uh, hasn't been able to listen since. Well, she should be able to listen. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. This lady called Lucy asked me to send her something of the program. So there's nothing I could figure that I could send. Uh, you can't send a recording of the programme, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to send a little DVD, which is not commercially available, of one of our series of cartoons. I'm going to send her that. I had a couple of those made privately. You may not be allowed to. 
Sweden doesn't matter. Yeah. It's different at Sweden. I mean, old ones. Old ones. They're on the, they're on the Facebook. What do you call the thing? Yes. They're on YouTube. Are they? Of course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know anything, do you? They're on YouTube. All those things are on YouTube. There's things on YouTube that you have no idea. You should look at it How sometime. do you get it? On your, what, what? How do you get YouTube? No, how do you get the wee man? How do you get... <laughs> <laughs> how do you get the wee cartoon man? You type in on what? the air. Yeah, what do you type in? Jerry Anderson on the air. Jerry Anderson on the air. You type in your name as well. They might... No, they won't. No, yeah, it's just a, it's Jerry Anderson Jerry on Anderson the air. On They're the all air. in there. There's thousands of people looking at them. You know nothing about it. What about the phone call? I'm not, I'm not taking it. <laughs> Good morning. Hello. Hello, Jerry. Yes, how are you? I'm sorry about that. I said I wasn't taking the phone call. I didn't mean uh, it personally. I'm just trying to annoy the people. What I've can we do for you today, you for if anything? Yes? I've listened to you for years, Jerry. I love the show. Have to say oh, good. Thank you. There's no content here. That's the thing that throws most people. Ah, uh, it's fantastic. <laughs> it really is fantastic. <laughs> no, I'll tell you what it is. I was out running on Saturday night, okay, in Belfast. I went uh, up the Finnegy Road. Yes. And running along, happy as I, and a wheel came bouncing through the air off a bicycle. But the bicycle had been attached to the back of a car. Yes. So... Doing a good deed, I ran out in the middle of the road and lifted the wheel. Mm-hmm. It didn't uh, pose any kind of threat to you at all, did it? No, 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 but it could have, car could have drove over it or something, you know. Yeah, so right. I tried to summon the car uh-huh. as it drove on, but they probably thought I was having a heart attack in the middle of the road or something. <laughs> Waving my arms about, but uh, I lifted the wheel anyway and carried it home six miles, running along with a bicycle wheel. I'm sure everybody thought I was half crazy. You were jogging, carrying a bicycle wheel? <laughs> yeah. You probably thought somebody had stole the rest of it. Well, that's it. That's what I'm saying. Uh, so, it happened about half seven on the Senegal Road. That's one of your uh, on cartoons. Oh, it is, all right. isn't it? <clears throat> <laughs> uh, so right. Sorry, never mind. Uh, we're a bit giddy today. It's a bank holiday thing. We've, we've started drinking too early. Uh, yeah. So, it's a bicycle wheel, and you found it on the Finnegy Road last night? No, uh, Saturday night. Saturday night, sorry. Yeah. Is it a kind of a racing bike wheel, or is it a BMX bike wheel? Or? It's a racing bike, and it has a racing bike back wheel that has eight wee cogs on it. Eight gears, eight cogs yeah. on it. Eight wee cogs. Yeah. Oh, that's that's a that's a top like of the range. Proper, yeah, proper racing bike. Quick okay. wheel. All right, then. So anyone who lost that, they may not be aware that they lost it until they got home. And they went, just boy, yeah. there's wheels away. That's so it, uh, okay, well, thank you for that, and thank you for taking the trouble. And the people who own that will probably uh, be very grateful. If, well, hopefully uh, it goes back to the straight owner. Right, yeah, if news reaches them. Okay, well, thank you very well, much how, indeed. How, how would they get it? They'll ring well, they here. Can pass on, pass on hey. Ask them to ring here. That's what we always do. Ring oh eight four five nine. But what if what if what if what if we're not here? We can ring. We'll be here until twelve. Yeah, but we're not manned all the time. So, and the, when, and the, so and when the, did that bother you? We never yeah, bothered you, you before. If you give out our number and someone rings at say at two o'clock this, this afternoon, or Box, three, shut up. And, oh eight four five nine five 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 six seven eight. If you've got that wheel, ah, uh, we need more of that on Radio Ulster. Some Red Indian rock and roll. White man come. Uh, there's a man. White man come. Make promises. Break all promises. The only promise he did not break. He said he would take our land. And he did. In Punjab. From India. <laughs> <laughs> there's a man who's pulled in. Especially. <laughs> big of him. <laughs> He's pulled in the spec. Hold on, before we go any further, let's get these two jokes out of the way. No, what about the man? People send me jokes all what the time. What about the man? Is that the same? I'm coming to him in a minute. Don't, don't, don't hurry. But he, Joe, Joe's in a hurry. It's all got to do with lambs. Tell the man who lost the bicycle that he should play a request. You picked a fine time to leave a loose wheel. No, you... What? You got that wrong. You picked a fine time to leave me loose wheel. Loose wheel, that's better. I'm sorry. Yeah, you picked a fine time to leave me loose wheel. Loose wheel. All right, yeah, sorry. Right. Hey, Dad, what do spiders eat? Shut up, kid. I'm not sure. Go check the web. That's the joke's over for the moment. What about Joe? Will you stop? Joe pulled into the side. You talked about a loose <laughs> lamb or a, a lost lamb. <laughs> you picked a fine time to leave me, loose lamb. Hello, good morning, Joe. Good morning, Jerry. What is this urgency that you require? There's a few loose lambs on the road here. Just was not concerned about their Okay. Activity. Unfortunately, one of them's already bit the dust, like. So. What, one's, oh, my God, already been run over? Aye, uh, the looks of it. Oh, dear, uh, dear. I managed to get two young back onto the field again, but the other one's just a wee bit too oh. quick in the feet for me. Oh, where, where is, where is this? It's just 
the entrance you know from Clotty I was heading from Derry to Dungiven that's the first entrance to Clotty from Derry to Dungiven that's on the main Belfast road of course yeah. very yeah. busy road and there's a lay-by on the left hand side opposite the entrance to Clotty oh so be careful now and the other oh. one there is just running a little bit of mock and it's getting a bit startled there so oh. I'm just wondering if the owners are listening or whatever they could come and maybe oh right uh, yeah, if the owners are there if, you, if they're listening come and round them up or else people are driving down that way just be careful going around that corner because yeah. you don't want to be no, no, you don't want to. You don't want to we, uh, we want to be black. There's exactly two black lambs, and one of the black lambs is one that has managed to get run over. Oh. So I took it off the road and put it to the side of the road. That's all I can do, like. Oh, dear. Oh, well, well, thanks for that. That's, that's no a good problem. idea to make people aware of that. So if you're driving to from Derry to Belfast at the start of your journey coming up to Claudia, just keep your eyes up because little lambs on the boat, and you know, they have a hard enough time without being run over. All right, then, if the owner's there, maybe you could uh, gather them up. Listen, thank you very much. Uh, You're welcome. Uh, nice of you to do that. Thank you very much. Okay, right. Bye. 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 Did you see the moon see? last night? I see the did moon quite see? often. No, but did you see the moon last night? Where, where was it? <laughs> it was up in the sky. <laughs> Just see the size of it. Um, what? I'm not interested in anything. But the moon's there all the time. And the moon hits <laughs> the sky like a big pizza pie. <laughs> It was huge last night. I looked up. It, it was probably the same on Saturday night. But I was coming home last night with drink taken. I must get my thing out and have a look at it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but I've got a, a sticky uppy. <laughs> I know you have. A telescope. <laughs> a telescope. <laughs> Great shows last night, kid. Oh, sorry. Great... <laughs> Great shows last week, kid. The Friday show caused uproar at St. Bosco's Old Folks Home when all the catheters came out because of the influence of the giant moon. A surging tide of pish and <laughs> engulfed the broom cupboard where the old people go for a quiet session. Two old codgers who were getting it on were swept out by the force of the moon and ended up in the middle of the street in a compromising position. It was the moon! It was the moon! The pull of the moon it was! I felt compelled to conjoin with old baldy Geraldo from Ward 6 who said something un unspeakable. Tommy, my cat, was building a replica of the giant of the grand titanic staircase. That row seems to have, uh, seems to have calmed down. Yeah. All the people demand to see the staircase in the titanic Belfast building. It's not all that it's cracked up to be, you know. What, People, the, the centre? No, the oh, no, no, the centre's great. Yeah. But, I mean, the, the Titanic, I don't think it's an actual complete replica. I don't think so. I may be wrong, but it's not all that terribly impressive. That's all the people who are clamouring to be, to, to be let in to see it. Because you can't get in there, you see, because it's a public fu uh, private function room. Anyway, Tom and Matt Cat was building a replica of the giant, of the grand Titanic staircase out of egg cartons. He turned and he said, any sign of the green shoots of recovery in the economy yet in the free state? Not at all, I said. As I watched the busy Lizzie scrubber doorstep on the other side of the street, Tommy added another egg carton and said, that's her nigh. The first sign of recovery in the free state will be the contentious and contemptible sight of Irish men and women skiing down the piste in Austria. The Irish should not ski, and I mean this, Irish, both north and south. It is unnatural. An affront to God and man. To see an Irish man on, a ska, on skis is akin to seeing a dog playing a banjo. Or Michael Majimsey laughing. Look, I miss Michael Majimsey. Remember when he was the health minister? There's a call for Edwin you, Edwin Poots is too exciting. What? Um, there's a wee call for oh, you. Will you stop? You just ruin everything. I'm having crack here and you make me stop and talk to people. Hello, uh, good morning. It's Paddy. Paddy, good morning, Paddy. Why won't Paddy speak? Because he's on two. That's why you won't speak. Yes, you're not paying for his telephone call. Oh, no, sorry, Paddy, I, got, I had you on the wrong thing. How are you today, Paddy? I'm very well, thank you very much. Good. Is there anything you can add to contribute to this programme? We're not doing much. No, but I'm going to ask you a question. Go I'm ahead. going to ask for a service, rather. Are you? I was listening to John Toll on Saturday when, yes. he was, when, he was broadcasting, when he was broadcasting from... Derry, London Derry. That's right, he was up here for the uh, right. City of Derry Jazz Festival. Well, John's a great a nice music man. a little piece of music, instrumental music. Have you heard of Lay Your Head Down? Um, well, by whom? It's or... a play or a film. Brian Byrne? No, no, I'm afraid Albert I haven't. Albert Nobbs, no. No, that is Albert Nobbs. Yep. Well, I know that movie. I haven't seen it yet, but I know of the movie. It, it, is that from a, that a, movie? It's a is lovely it? piece of instrumental music, and I'm chasing it up. Oh, it's from the movie, is it? Yeah, and it was um, December 2011, six yeah. months away. Yeah. 
and I would dearly like to get a, get my hands on the recording of it, and I'd like to hear you playing it. By the way, it's very good. Well, maybe instrumental some... that is, not with any vocal pieces. Well, that should be. A, of course, it wouldn't be available yet. The DVD wouldn't be available because the movie's still in the theatres. Yep. Uh, that'll be available. I'm Sinead sure. Sinead O'Connor does a piece, but um, I'd rather hear it just as an uh, instrumental piece. It's very, very well done. Sinead O'Connor has retired. So I hear. She's going to go into spiritual she's music. She's given the clergy a bit of a rest then. That's only usually what... Uh, she's going into spiritual music. That's what country and singers... That's what country and western singers do when their career falls. They make, <laughs> they make a gospel album. Yeah. And they say, I've always really wanted to do one of these. I think she'll be making an immaculate uh, <laughs> return. Uh, the immaculate deception. <laughs> the immaculate deception. All right, then. OK, well, listen, maybe perhaps someone out there could maybe make that available to us. We have all kinds of ways of yes, playing stuff I'm for people's sure, yeah, that, that's, yeah? <clears throat> that's why I'm ringing. All right, why then. If I come across it, I'll play it for you. Why don't you contact John Toll, Jerry? No, contact John no Toll? Oh, why don't you do it? No, why don't you do it? I I'm do doing it. a programme here. Why don't yeah, you contact him? After the programme... Why don't you, you do it after? After the programme, you phoned John Toll and said, hey, John, wh- wh- what's that piece of music? Can I get a copy of it? I want to play it's it. It's a bank and... holiday. John Toll will be drunk now. After the programme, he'll be up. He'll be, he'll be... You know, at quarter past twelve, John Toll should be out of bed. Oh, he should be, yeah. He shouldn't he? Well, OK. I'm not going to ring a man to bank holiday. He Why not? Have... He might be eating. He's always eating. He's always eating, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think he. I think he runs that program on Saturday just to get the free food. He can't stop talking about food. <laughs> I must talk to him. He should be like yeah, a side of a house. Well, should when be you're like talking Nolan. to him, ask him about that CD. Thank you, you're doing a good job there, Sean. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. All right, then I'll do that. Yes, that's very good of you. Thank you. Bye. All the best. Bye. Why don't you get the CD? No, I the man time. asked you. The man phoned. I haven't time for this kind the of piddling the, stuff. The Jerry Anderson program. You I know, but that's John not Tull. the way it works. I, I, I'm the only person that does things. I, I'm, I'm my own grandfather. I've <laughs> never heard that expression before. <laughs> I, I don't know what I, do, I have no idea what that means <laughs> even. I just said it. I'm my own grandfather. <laughs> Uh, morning, Jerry. What was the name of the artist you played on Friday? The song was Indians. People keep asking about that you song. No, no. Roxy Gordon. The name is Roxy Gordon. He's a man who's a singer, songwriter, who was a singer, songwriter. He's now gone to that great... He was an Indian, as far as I know. Roxy Gordon, R-O-X-Y-G-O-R-D-O-N. What about Pinball? I was Brian very Prothero. hurt the other day there, uh, read that song. Why? Because uh, someone texted in to say that Jerry is an Indian. I am not. I didn't like that. That's bad news for you. I did. I was, I was hateful. I, I, I really was taken aback. But you see, I don't think you are an Indian. I think the man's th- right. No, I think I am. I think, I, I think I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an Indian in my own wee way. Would an Indian have done what you did this morning? What did I do this morning? I'll tell you what you did this morning. I'm going to share this with the listeners. I hope you don't mind. I don't know. Don't. Over the course of the weekend here in Radio Foil, there's a bunch of pigs in here. I include myself as one of them. Oh, yes. And people go in and have tea and eat and stuff, and they throw everything in the sink. Yes. Everyone came into the, this building this morning, went to the sink, it was piled up with dirty things. Yes. Wasn't it? Yes. Everyone just l- said, look at the state of that. You washed everything. Yes. I came in and I went, I went bananas. I went ballistic. I and you, the ship you cleared out the sink and, and you I washed everything. I cleaned things up. I cleaned up. I tidied in- up. An Indian wouldn't do that. That's all I'm saying to you. Oh. An Indian wouldn't even see that. John McCabe and Newry. Jerry, could you please play a compliment? Our glorious May Day, Monday weather, we're all going to die. Or failing that, the Carpenters, rainy days and Mondays always let me down. But after Mr Blue Sky, no good. You see, that's why I played Mr Blue Sky this morning, because there are grey skies over the... There are grey skies over Ulster today, Sean. And the people out there think it, they've done something to God, because no matter what bank holiday God sends, it makes it rain, it makes us all sit and look out the window and watch... Loose women or something like that. Class opening song, Jerry. I'm reading some of these texts because you, I think it's important. Uh, the Killy Wool listener wants to know, are you on this evening? <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. Am I on this evening? Yeah. Am I on I this hope evening? you are on this evening. Right? I don't know. Does that mean radio or something or television? No, I'm not on anything this evening. I don't think so. Would that be a wee casty thing? Casty thing? Uh, we call it. Casty thing? Yeah, you wee... I don't know what that means, casty thing. You be casty things. You be you be casty thing. You be thing on at seven o'clock if you know. Oh well, you're involved too. Yeah. Uh, sometimes that... there's a thing called Anderson Extra. Is that I, what you're talking about? I don't know. Well, maybe there's something on tonight. Nobody tells us anything. What does the undertone do? 
He's, he's slightly at home as far as I know. Yeah, but what does he do? It comes in after the program, he hands you a bit of paper, and then you and him do It's called something. an iPod. No, 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 a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's a podcast. The podcast. Right. We do podcasts. We're not doing one today because that's, it's a bank maybe holiday. What, maybe that's what he's on about. The undertone does the bank holidays. No, sorry. The undertone does the podcasts, but uh, nobody does them, and he's not here. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know how to. <laughs> Thank you, says a man. He's enjoying the radio program. Would you please uh, play Sharon Shannon's version of Albatross by Fleetwood Mac? I know what occasioned that. There's a very good program on BBC Radio Four about the story of Fleetwood Mac, told in their own words, and it was very good. I'm going to watch that again because it was repeated last night. Jerry, that's one of the best records ever. Blue skies, yes, it is. These are the little messages we get. Um, did you mention something about the 10th of May? No. What's going on, on the 10th of May? No idea. No. Hmm. Watched Reeling in the Years last night. Ken was on it. <laughs> was he? Was he? Is it possible, says another person, to source? Your radio shows from previous years on DVD. No, it's not. Nothing that we've ever done has ever been committed to vinyl or indeed recorded. Yes, it has. Well, years ago. Yes, years ago. It was a very good idea. And it was a set. Uh, but that was very popular. That's 20 years ago. Yeah, but, do you remember but nobody that? ever said, let's do another one. No, but that was very, very popular. I know, but nobody ever said, let's do another one. But you see, we've got our little cartoons now. I think no, people, but, uh, no, I think you should. What, do you know what we should do? We should make those commercially available. What was your uh, cassette called? The Worst of Jerry Anderson. The Worst of Jerry Anderson. I didn't like that title. I thought it was all right. No. And uh, the BBC made, I think, a thousand of them. Sold them in ten minutes. Uh, and had to do had to do another couple of runs. But they never said, let's do another one. No, they never came back. Well, you see, that's the type of thing. It, they don't have confidence in us. You see, well, the, the answer to that is no, I'm afraid. I have to say, there's nothing. Do you realise that when we die, which could be very soon, but you'll go before me, yeah. there'll be nothing left of us. Except maybe kind of TV I stuff. Know. Another gentleman says, why don't you go on TV instead of Nolan? No, it's quite simple. Nolan is very... No, let me just say this before I go any further. I think Stephen Nolan is brilliant on television. He's great on radio. He's brilliant on television. A bit yucky, all right, but he's very, very good at what he does. But he has to lose some weight. He knows that himself. I'm going to get a man to make him a suit, to make him look thin. <laughs> no, I am. He mentioned that during the handover. I'm going to go out of my way to find a man to make him a nice suit, which will make him... But he has to lose weight. He's too fat. He's too fat. Now, I don't say that in any pejorative way, but you see, nobody... Because it takes away from the content of the programme. See, when you're watching him and he's doing something interesting, but you're not saying that's an interesting subject. What you're saying is, look at the size of him. That's what you're saying. For instance, like, for instance, that programme with Mary Beard, uh, Meet the Romans. I can't watch that. A, because, well, it's not very good anyway because she dumbs it down far too much. And secondly, you look at her and you say, look at the state of her. You can't help that. That's a sexist thing to say, and I know, but that's the way it is. I'm sorry. I hope you don't mind me saying this stuff, Sean. A lady phoned in to say she's got great trouble sleeping at night and she was looking for some sort of uh, remedies. Now, not the usual <laughs> go and get some pills or take a little hot whiskey before you go to bed at night. Any, is any old-fashioned remedies to help her sleep at night? Do you I know don't any? know. I can think of a number of things, but I'm not going to go into that now. <laughs> <laughs> See, I didn't realise it was so short. Well, uh, that's a great song. That that's uh, really good. Uh, no, I, I was doing never, something else. Sorry. You never heard it. I heard it upstairs. <laughs> didn't realise it was too short. All right then. Listen, I've been stalked by people. There's a man looking for you. I know that. I saw you yesterday at Heathrow Airport, being very suave with the female members of staff. <laughs> oh. Trying to get on for nothing. And the gentleman said, uh, "I saw you in Lanzarote." Uh, last week. Did you enjoy Playa Blanca? Yes, I was there. I thought it was you, but my wife thought you were too young-looking and sophisticated to be that famous radio presenter. Ooh. Did you buy any Clarins in Fund Grub? That's a German shop over there. Yeah. You see that? Yeah. You're doing well. You know, I, I, I was talking to a fellow the other day, and he's, he was, his wife said to him, she said that he had all the characteristics of a stalker. And I said, well, she's not my wife yet. Uh. <laughs> That last week. <laughs> I love that. A wee Jack Russell was found in the Ballyskate area. Why do you have to correct me all the time Here. and tell people I say things twice? Tell me more about that Jack Russell. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Because I have a Jack Russell lost. Do you really? Yeah. A wee Jack Russell. Are you listening? Uh, what colour is yours? <laughs> <laughs> I'll see yours if you show me mine. It's white and brown. So is mine. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Mine's answers to the name of honey. Mine doesn't bother. <laughs> is yours from Lurgan? Ah, uh, mine's is from the Malone Balmoral area. Yeah, well, to hell with that. 
Oh, uh, the wee Jack Russell that I have yes. is white and brown, but it was found. Where? Hold on a second. Oh, wait a minute, right? It was found in near Lurgan. Now, how would a black Jack Russell get from 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 Malone to, to Lurgan? How would it get unless somebody lifted it? Maybe have, it's the same one. Have you a, fo- a telephone number? Like uh, f- f- <laughs> I have. A Jack Russell was found in the Ballyskate area near Lurgan on Saturday. He's about... How old is yours? Oh, I haven't got an age for mine. <laughs> <laughs> mine is ageless. Well, mine is one year old. Right. And it's white and brown. Is yours white and brown as well? Mine is white and brown. And has... Well, that's too much of a coincidence. Isn't it? I've got a phone number here. So have I. <laughs> <laughs> Does it end with a no? No, mine ends with a five. No, but that's the person who owns it. Yeah, I know. I've got the phone number of the person who's found it. Yeah. Why don't we put these two together and maybe make yes. some music? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, and I'd like to say congratulations and good luck. Uh, although it's probably too late now to all the people who are running the Belfast Marathon. It started at nine o'clock. Some people might be finished. Yeah, the real no, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe maybe just finished now. I remember last year. Remember, I ran a leg of it. Mm-hmm. Nolan was standing there like a big pound of lard. Uh, I ran a leg of it, and uh, I must say I enjoyed it. Belfast Marathon is great, but it was a lovely day this day last year. The sun was shining. Actually, put some people off because uh, it was too hot for them. Would love you to play any track from the once, or as they're called in Derry, the once. Have heard you playing them before. I met them last year when they appeared at the Bluegrass Festival at Oma. I've been a fan since. Yeah, they're from Canada, aren't they? I'm going to Canada next week. Did you know that? No, no you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. You're not. I'm going to Canada this day next week. I'm going to Canada for two weeks. You're not. I am. You, will you not be in here? Yeah, but I didn't think it was next week. It is next week. I'll be gone for the next two weeks. I'll be here until Friday, and then that's me. I'm out of here. Never knew that. Now you see. Uh, I hope you're keeping well. Just a wee note, a belated welcome back after your important break away. Do you hear that? For God's sake, don't go away again. (laughs) That's a a tribute to you and Jerry Kelly. Friends of mine were up in Derry Stoke, London, there at the Christy Moore concert. I told them you might be there. This got them excited. Anyway, I'd like to see you back on TV rather than the big Nolan man. Keep her lit. Well, I doing some things that might be on TV soon. Do you remember I was telling about we were doing the, uh, the documentary about, uh, about people's hair? Why do you never take me onto the TV with you? Because I don't get on. No, I'm doing this documentary about uh, procedures, you know, what people do about, you know, get their hair, hair transplants. I think there's like a that. program in me and you. No, but it's a very good program. And, uh, yeah. you know, you, but you don't know how it's going to end. Because you keep looking at me every day. Because you want to guess the ending, don't you? Don't you? But is the program not ended? No. It's not over until the fat lady sings. No, we're not finished it yet, no. Oh, but you see, you don't know how it's going to end. No. You might, but you, you can, you might, I might walk in here someday and you'd say, oh, it's ended. Or else you might not. We don't know. It's, all, it's a program about, it's a TV program about uh, what people do when, if they consider they need hair. About wigs and about transplants and all kinds of things. I'm not quite sure when. It'll be on soon. It's not finished yet. It's nearly finished. But you see, nobody knows what's going to happen at the end. You know what I'm talking about, don't uh-huh, you? Uh-huh. What else are you doing? I might take the plunge myself. You think I should? You should, yes. I don't know yet. I, I'm look, a I, I look at men now, you know. <laughs> 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 well, you get to that stage. I'm a so I look at their heads. I, because of your involvement with this program. And I hear you talking about it, and you talk to us about it, and you know people that you've talked to. I could uh, tell you things uh, that yes. you wouldn't believe. You've told us one or two. No, I haven't. No, I haven't told, told you. Any, I haven't two. told you anything about you've it. You've told us about people that you've talked to. I haven't told you any detail. No, no, no detail. No, I'm, you have to wait for the TV program. We went to America, we went to LA, we went yes. to New York, we went everywhere. But I look at men now, and uh. I say you should go and get your wee. No, you look at well, you're ready for it. It's a bigger question than can be answered by a simple man. It's as simple as that. I'm a civil servant. Uh, people will have to wait for the TV program to see what I do. What else are you doing on TV? Nothing. <laughs> no, this is what I'm working on at the moment, and I'm very happy about that, because uh-huh. I've retired, as you know, from light entertainment. I've retired. It was Daniel O'Donnell made me stop. Yeah. That's why I, I announced that I was retiring, because I realized that I had become Daniel's second banana. And he didn't like me. I said to myself, there's no point in this. And there he is, opening his visitor centre. I want to do a game show or a quiz. No, you don't want to do that. I do. No, you don't. No, do you know what I want to do? I want to, I want to present the chase. 
But Bradley Walsh? Uh, there's a man already I couldn't doing do it. that. There's a man already doing it. I'll be the guy who un- answers all the questions at the end. Ah, you'll be the chaser. Ah, the That's chaser. Good. Yeah. I'm a civil servant and I listen to your programme at work. Do you hear that? Yes. Defying the law of the land. It's the only thing that makes sure I don't have to talk to my people, my co-workers. And fair play to you and Sean for being in today. Not many people would wipe the sleep from their eyes and get up at a bank holiday Monday. I know I didn't. You see... We don't, we, don't, we, don't get, we don't get credit for being here. No, I was, be, there was me last look night. Look behind you. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I never scared the life out of that bald head. I thought it was somebody's arse. <laughs> that was Ken. He just, I didn't hear him coming in. I just saw him behind me. <laughs> oh my God. Look, my heart's racing. So then. Why does he do that? What did, he, what did they come in for? Hey, nothing. He came in for nothing. <laughs> they didn't leave me anything or anything. No, he just came in to stand there like some kind of ghost. There's oh. a man there for you, Mon. <laughs> my heart pumping. See, I'm, not, I'm used to being in here on my own. Hello, good morning. That's why I don't like it when anybody comes in. Hello, good morning. Hello, hello. How Who's the form? Um, oh, by the way, is that, that's not Geordie, is it? No. Why, any word of Geordie? No, she already called him Sam on Friday. Was I? Yes. <laughs> forgot. <laughs> Hello, good morning, sir. I thought maybe perhaps you were Geordie. Sorry about that. How are you today? Oh, uh, do you want the real answer or do you want the... You I want whichever answer you prepare, you're prepared to give me. <clears throat> I'm feeling great, but... <laughs> I'm sorry, disappointing. Right? But, but I, could, I could give you a list of hassle that I have with uh, medical implants. That's not doing me any favours. What know? do you mean medical implants? Tell me a wee bit about it. What kind of implants? Teeth or anything? No. What? A hip. Oh, you, have you got a hip? I've got two of them. <laughs> so I believe. Have you got two of them replaced? Aye. Uh, oh, that's a terribly serious the thing. The only handling being that one was class and one was awful. Is the old pensioner talk here? <laughs> 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 it's pensioner. No uh, harm to you, Jared. I'm not a pensioner. What age are you? Sorry. I'm only a Scot, uh, 40 odd. No, well, I'll be honest, I'm 50 odd. 50 odd? Well, that's very young to be having trouble. Were you a footballer or something, or did you abuse no, yourself? No, I had a, what do you might call it, some kind of disease. Like oh, had you? Oh, I'm sorry to hear and, that. And uh, that was the very first thing the doctor says when I was looking about the hip. He says, what are you doing here? You're far too young to need one of these yokes. Yeah, wouldn't you think that? And anyway, but yokes. my reason for calling is... How many yokes have you, many yokes have you got now? Two. Have, have you two yokes? Aye. <laughs> Look, and I tell the youngsters when I die, straight to trainers, weigh in for scrap, good money, good prices for titanium. <laughs> We'll bring you down to the scrapyard. Oh, they're going to hack them bits out of me and then put me in the box. Do you know what people are doing now? And this is something which I could not believe. Yes. Uh, sorry to interrupt you now, but I have to say this. Uh, I was talking to a gentleman the other day, and he said, he's not my dentist, but he's a man who is a dentist, right? And he said he hears all the time about people who are getting their teeth out. And t- the gold ones? Getting the gold out and bringing it. You know those shops that are popping up all around the place? Yeah. Uh, bringing your gold. People are bringing it in saying, give us a few quid for that. I've getting their teeth out. Them, believe it or not, as well, but I'm not, no intention of giving it away. Last time I heard that dumbest Nazis used to do it, but the people are doing that now. People are bringing it, taking out their own, t- going to, going to the, 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 the dentist, and, but why would, they take, why would they take out a good tooth? But you see, if you go to a dentist and ask them to take out their tooth, they're not going to say no, are they? Oh, they would, surely. But he may Would keep it? it. What? Does the dentist not keep it? <laughs> no. If I went to the dentist and I said, I wonder, that's a very interesting point. If I went to the dentist and said, listen, uh, would you take this tooth out? Well, uh, uh, what would he say? Uh, no, because you don't need it out. I would say, well, I want it out. And you'd pay him maybe to take it out. But whatever you'd pay him to take it out, you'd probably get more for the gold in your tooth. And could, can he say no? It, anyway, th- that's an ethical question. I think you would have to. It, it, no, I think he, because he asks you if do you want a gold film, what type of film you want, don't you? Doesn't he? Oh no, you uh, no. Yes, you, they you, do. It, no, no dentist has ever said you want a gold tooth. No, but you, you have to decide yes, you want you, that. That's what I mean. Therefore, you say to the you suggest to the dentist, yeah. I want a gold film, and, and you pay for it, and you pay for it through the so, nose. So therefore, you know, he says I can put in an ordinary film. Uh huh. Well, why wouldn't he take it out for you then? Because you why, why? Well, if you pay him, yeah. Yeah. But you see, that's like going to a doctor and saying. Break my arm. 
But why would you say that to the doctor? You because maybe you want to claim compensation. No, you wouldn't say that no, to the doctor. Say, yeah. no, that's a wrong example. Mm-hmm. Anyway, are, are, have you finished your operations and all that kind of stuff? No, I'm just kind of hoping that they're going to be able to do something for me. Well, are you able to get about a bit? I'm sort of hopping around one leg, just. Yeah. And uh, you sound as if you're from around about Inniskillen, are you? No, Tyrone. Tyrone? He's got what, a sort of... You've got a kind of here, an Inniskillen sure. accent. Huh? I've talked to you a hundred times before. I know, but sure, I don't know anybody. But but um, my reason for calling you is to give congratulations to three members of my family, sort of extended family, that are uh, doing the marathon. The Belfast Marathon today? Uh, well, sir, no, they're doing the relay part of it. Or doing a, a, a leg or two, yeah? Ah, uh, you know, that kind of crack. Yeah, yeah. My daughter came over from England to do it, and I have a son-in-law from France that's doing it, and also a sort of a potential son-in-law from Belfast is doing it as well. A potential son-in-law? Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I did a leg of it last year, Nolan said he did. Right. But uh, it's, it's, a leg is quite doable. Yes. Uh, there's legs, one of those legs are as short as like five and a half miles, you know. You can do uh, that, walking and running, you know. Yes, but um, yeah. uh, the other thing I was going to say, mention, was that the, uh, what do you call it, in-law people from France have come over as well. Yeah. Because the uh, French fellas doing the race, do you see? Yes, I understand that, yeah. So uh, I would just wish them all the best. Last year, the people who were watching, uh, they were too hot. Uh, 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 no, and sorry, the people who were watching, they were having a great day, uh, and the runners were all, they were collapsing, it was so hot. I didn't collapse, because I didn't really put in a lot of effort. Well, listen, the best of luck with your yucks, and yes. I hope everything works out for you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right, thank you, sir, and uh, the best of luck to you. Yes. Thank you very much. And enjoy your holidays. Thank you very much indeed. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. There's a call on two. Why is the music loud enough to break all the glasses in my kitchen, says Rory? But I can hardly hear you when you're talking. It must be a conspiracy because the 40 seconds I listened to Jerry Kelly last week, everything was okay from a sound quality point of view. The content is another matter. What a cruel thing to write. But have you noticed something? Yes. Have you noticed that since you got Ken give you the new microphone? Yes. Not one person that you have spoken to on the phone have said, I can hardly hear you. They That's all, absolutely right. Have you noticed that? That's absolutely right. We've, we've solved this. So it must have been your microphone. I always knew that. I always said that in the old poo-poo. Well, do you want to try Vivian on too? (laughs) All right, then. (laughs) Let me just tell the people about the little thing we're doing tomorrow night. Uh, Just for the the people who may not know. Uh, Not not, not we are doing, you're doing. Oh, Kim Asabi. No, people might think I'm involved. No, you're not involved. No, no, I better tell you you're not involved. They'll they'll be disappointed if I'm not there. If you thought you were there, they wouldn't come. Anyway, it's a new initiative. It's been done on the mainland. (laughs) for a couple of years. What happens is it's called In the Dark. Uh, people get together, a, an audience, you know, like 100 people, that kind of thing, and they sit somewhere nice, congenial, and have a wee drink, and then uh, they listen to a radio program. And what happens is that the presenter and the producer are there, and the presenter or the producer introduces the radio program, people come and get a wee drink, and they sit down, and they dim the lights, and they listen to the program. And then afterwards, they talk about it. It's a new thing. And the program is called uh, The Mystery of the Moving Statues. It's a program I made for Radio 4 a couple of years ago, produced by Rachel Hooper. And it was about uh, this gentleman who uh, claimed to predict the coming of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And a couple of times, thousands and thousands of people went to knock the shrine and waited for the heavens to open. And some of them said that it actually did. And it's apropos, uh, the current controversy with uh, Cardinal Brady, that kind of thing. The Catholic Church is under siege. And uh, this is not about... And so everybody's up in arms about the church. But people forget that there's two things. There's the church and there's religion. See, there's the church, which is a bureaucratic uh, structure. And there's religion, which is things that people have always believed, even since pagan times. And Irish people have always had a little bit of the pagan in them, you know, superstition. And then Christianity came and then they became pagans who were Christians. And then... You know, they started to think about money and then they became capitalists, Christians and pagans. It's all about that. So it's apropos, appropriate that that should be done. So it's uh, part of the Cathedral Arts question, uh, question, question the yeah. Cathedral Arts Festival. That's yeah. Cathedral. I'm doing this off the top of my head. I shouldn't do this. Cathedral Arts Festival. So uh, if you want to take it, to, the admission is free. Where? The Black Box in Belfast. What so time? Lo- Eight o'clock. So who log gives off- it, who, who, Who's giving out the drink? 
Nobody is giving out the you drink. You said people go along, have a wee drink. Is they, it you? Uh, are you, it's, are it's, you buying drink? No, it's a concept that's alien to you. You buy your own drink. There's a bar there. You have a drink if you want. And it's very, very good. So you log on to the Cathedral Quarter uh, Festival website and get yourself a ticket if there are any left. I don't know if there's any left or not. Maybe there are, maybe there aren't. Anyway, John Pete, and Lauren said that the, my mic was very low all through the program and I should have had it turned up. Where was Ken? You see, Ken, Ken should, should advise me. I'm going, to turn, I'm going to turn your mic up now, right? Right. You see, that's better. Look. I don't, well, she didn't know that. Ken's slacking. There's a call on too. Please, please, please tell your listeners about the St. Rose's Dominican College's 50th anniversary gala dinner on Friday night, the 11th of May. Everyone is invited. Friends of the school, past pupils, parents of pupils. The dinner p- takes place in the Wellington Park Hotel and starts at 7.30. Tickets are available from the school office. It would be a great night. It will be a great night of entertainment. So there we are. I noticed photographs in the newspaper today of our old primary school. Tell me this. Where's the black box? It's a little side street behind John Hewitt Bar. You know John Hewitt Bar in Donegal Street? Hello? Yes, no, I'm trying to think where... where you go to the John Hewitt where, Bar where, and then you go through a little alleyway and you go down there and... It's is, that down, is that down the clock? Nah. Right, it's not that one down the Do you know the where the John Hewitt Bar is? Yes. You I walk know out of the no, bar... I know it now. Yes, yes, you take, yes. You walk three doors down, there's a kind of an alleyway. Past the, past the cathedral? No. 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 Well, what? You're listening to me. If you, you walk past John the John Bar, if you walk past the John Hewitt, you you, you, you don't come. walk past it. You go out, you go into it, and you go out of it. That's right. and you go out to the left. You walk to the left about ten yards. There's a little passageway down. Uh, Aye, and yes, it's just down the bottom. Oh, down the there, where I was. Round the corner from the pub you were in. Ah, round the corner from the pub I was in. Did he buy a drink, Emma? I wasn't there. Emma wasn't there. Very non-committal. It's, uh, there, there's, the, there's a pub down there and it's got all flowers outside. That's it? B- b- baskets. That's it. I can't remember the name of it, but it's on the way to the black box. That's the, bla- the black box. So when you go down there, you come out on Turn right. A, you t- turn right. Black box is there. I don't J- know the name right of the street. Just right on the corner. It's a very narrow it? street. No, it's not the corner. It's in the middle of the street. It's a very narrow street. Those yeah. are old uh, uh, cobblestone streets. It was like the... Uh, uh, it was an old... Industri- what are you talking to me about that? People know where the... A black box. No, they didn't. Check out the Secret Sisters playing with the Chieftains. The song is per- Peggy Gordon. Jerry, the moon is closer to the earth this week. Yeah, it's something like 25,000 miles closer than it normally is. Please, can you do the old man in the nursing home? <laughs> what about Vivian? <laughs> <laughs> What's the old man in the nursing home? Thank you, Robert. Sing us a song. <laughs> what would you like me to sing? Oh, sing us one of those songs we used to sing. In the 60s. Uh, what are we saying? All right, then. <laughs> Zabadak. I knew it. I knew it. Karaka, 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 Zabadak. Karaka, Zabadak. Karaka. Shai, shai, Zabadak. Karaka, Zabadak. Karaka. All join in. Zabadak. <laughs> oh, yes. Help. It's funny I how you know. Somebody. It's funny how you know all the words of Zabadek. Help! Hmm. I need somebody. Help! Not just anybody. Help! <laughs> That's what we all be singing around the piano, <laughs> won't we? Piano. What about Vivian? Piano. 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 Oh, I wish I had a penny for every time I wished 